Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rick along with Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. We're back to the plus side in just about everything, including hogs. And let's talk about the grain trade first, Brian, because it looks like we're putting a little bit of geopolitical premium back into the markets here today, even though we're off of the overnight highs. We are, and we're probably maybe seeing some profit taking to the uh, corn market has been down yeah. eight consecutive sessions. So uh, you know, one out of nine higher isn't anything to write home about. And we're having a tough time today hanging on again to those overnight gains when we saw uh, more uh, premium for war put back in. And as soon as it gets in, the market seems to sell and take it right back out. It doesn't really seem to care that much. Uh, it, it does look like the, the attack was on a ship and not necessarily on a port. And then grain loading seemed to go on after that attack anyway. But but yeah, you know, down quite hard. You've got a decent forecast out there, Michelle, for rain to help fill ears, help fill pods. Uh, unlike about 10 days ago, when we were looking at a really kind of hot and dry stretch. This is a flip of that. And consequently, the market has gone defensive this week. I think primarily on the weather outlook, the entire nation other than the Southwest should see above normal precipitation, below normal temperatures really a contrast to what we saw in June and early July for the crop production. And as you mentioned, we've been down most of the week here. And technically, um, soybeans look like we're still trying to hold a little bit of weather premium. We're right you know, at that 200-day moving average level here today or trading right above it. And so you know, as we go into the weekend, if these rains confirm, do we take that out? And then where do we project to, Brian? Yeah, if the rains, you know, materialize and they're widespread and farmers feel pretty good about this, I, my guess is you'll see some hedge pressure pick up and speculative selling. And that takes us down toward that $13 level, maybe maybe with some real weakness down the 12 and a half. But keep in mind that the market was likely trading a 51 or maybe even a 50 bushel yield and the USDA left last month's number at 52. So with the rain, if you're kind of thinking, well, maybe this edges back toward that 51, 51 and a half, 52, nothing's really new there. So the carryout number stays near 300 million. Otherwise, the market's probably been trading at 200 million bushel carryout. The end user may have gotten a break. Keep in mind that soybean oil is, is uh, not very off, far off its highs and energy prices remain firm. So the bean market has good, fundamental support, but it, it is challenged right now, in particular, if you think the crop is on the rise, and that's the way it looks with the forecast this week. Yeah, and processing margins have been good too, so that seems to keep a pretty good floor in that market as well. The corn market, you mentioned yield on soybeans, but what about corn? You know, is the market feeling a little bit more comfortable that the crop is stabilizing, or where does it feel like yield is at? It, well, the way the market went down, it is. And some of your private estimates are confirming that, or at least headed in that direction. FC Stone comes out at 177, Informa 176, USDA last month 177.5. And just in some conversation with farmers over the last couple of weeks, received some timely or good rains. They're feeling much more confident in what their crop might look like. With that being said, I still want to argue that 15% of the crop this late in the season rate of poor to very poor still has me scratching my head how you pull out a 177 yield on that. Yeah, and that's 15, still record. Yeah, 15% wasn't poor, very poor. And I, I, I focus on that because the good and excellent can vacillate back a little bit. So we look to really see that fair if it goes one direction or another. But that poor to very poor, boy, that's... Um, That'd be pretty special if we could pull a 177 yield out of increased acres and 50%, 15% poor to very poor. It'd make one really conjure up, you know, a really bearish outlook in, in the years ahead if we have a much higher rated crop, what that could actually look like for yield potential. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what USDA does with that when we get into the Friday WASD, whether they make any adjustments, because we don't get into the actual surveys or the field, I guess, uh, surveys until September, right? That is that is correct. And I believe they'll also do satellite imagery on this report, though, too, as well as customer surveys. So I'm, I'm of the opinion that they'll probably make some changes just because of weather. My guess would be they downgraded a little bit. But we'll look toward that September report as probably the bigger one of the year to really give us a feel for what that crop looks like and whether or not these late July, early August rains really turn the crop around or just salvage what is a 
going to look like maybe a very, you know, good or mediocre crop. Just depends where you are. There's some great crop out there, but it's not, it's not the, um, uh, the great crops are the exception this year. There's a lot of average crops in particular in areas that just had prolonged dry. Yeah. So getting to a record, even 177 and a half, I think would be a record. Seems a little like a tough lift to me. Okay. Cattle market. Let's move over there because uh, the market held support it needed to earlier here in the week. And now we've had some Northern cash trade that's been a little higher. So market is kind of responding to that here today. It is. We're up sharply in the, uh, in, in, in fact, all the contracts as, as, uh, as we look at it, we're anywhere from about a buck seventy-five to two sixty higher. August leading the way higher. Uh, looks like the um, the options go off the board today, so maybe a little play on that. I don't know. I find that one tough to always draw lines to that or connect those dots. But you've got a good cash market. What continues to loom large in the futures market, however, are the charts that indicate big bearish key reversals not too long ago, right. and so we're 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 pushing back toward those but we haven't taken those out yet. Um, everything boils down again to supply. We have a limited supply of market-ready animals. The market hasn't seen demand really cut back. There's a lot of us who probably thought, boy, we'd see some, some midsummer wane. It doesn't look like that's the case. We're a little bit surprised at that. Maybe it's a sign of a stronger economy. Maybe it's a sign that consumers just accept higher prices on everything right now. But whatever the case, we're seeing some really good... Uh, some good undertone to the market that hasn't let up really for it's a year now, but in particular the last six months. Let's talk about this milk market. We're 17 and above here in the futures finally, now that we got that ugly July contract off the board here, but we did kick in DMC payments here. Do you, you know, sense that we're going to continue to struggle here for a little while yet from a price perspective or a profitability perspective? If, if you're hoping that we'll see big liquidation and then a, a really hard run to the top side, I think you're hoping for too much. I don't know if we can get back to $20 in the fourth quarter, maybe back to 19. We were there not too long ago. Um, but to your point, some of these payments, insurance, hedging, that all paid dividends the first six, seven, eight months of this year. And so those farm operations that are larger are more defensive minded. We think they're better equipped to to have managers that will hedge and do things that keep the herd more active. But that being said, still, when you look ahead, things are not all that rosy. And for many, it's been a pretty tough run. So we expect that we'll see cow numbers decline slowly, maybe more aggressively into the August time, August, uh, September time window, as farmers get a look at kind of what they have for silage. And I know in my home state of Wisconsin here, lots of variability to the crop. There'll be a lot of uh, talk of, of silage shortages just because the crop is short in stature. And so things to think like think about in that vein, things that kind of make farmers make a decision, ultimately that provides support for a milk market. Ultimately, what we need to see is better overseas demand, though, and that, that was not the case when we saw uh, the last global dairy trade. Just continue to emphasize that China has a tough economic road they're on right now. Yeah, and the dollar is pushed back above 100, and so that's been a little bit of a headwind. Um, the other thing you mentioned, silage prices, but hay prices have been creeping back up, and there's some spot shortages or just some really tight markets out there. That's also influencing some of these dairy decisions in terms of liquidation, isn't it? Oh, for sure. In my home state, as I mentioned, I, I traveled uh, from nor uh, southeast to northwest, and there are some pretty big pockets of dry weather. You could see probably third cutting hay being made and there wasn't much in those wind rolls. So there's going to be some tighter hay supply for sure. And in those same basic areas, that's where you saw a lot of variability to the crop size for corn. And you can see a lot of that silage corn. So that's going to be a tighter market this year. And that's just a function of how things started out in, in late May and June, and just continued through late July as you had bouts with hot and dry weather some timely rains, but mostly just lack of, it was mostly scattered rains. And so it was lack of good, consistent moisture. You just didn't get the growth in the hay or, or in the silage corn. Yeah. A lot of debate about how much liquidation that we've seen in the dairy herd. What's your best guess on that? Oh, I, 
well, it's, it's, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a best guess on this. But if we reduce the cow herd 50 to 100,000 by year's end, I think I would be surprised. Um, this is an industry that's been pretty easily able to ramp up in a hurry. But I think what I'm looking for in a bigger scope and bigger picture is, again, uh, small to mid-sized producers moving out and whether or not those cows go into herds or, or not. That That's yet to come out of the wash. Right now, the beef prices are so high, though, that that even my dairy producers who are very good managers, they are measuring every cow right now. So you could see a little bit of a period here where if silage or, or, or hay is tight, you might see some heifers or cows go really quickly, even in the large dairies. All right. Thanks for joining us, Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. That's Markets Now.